Good afternoon to you. Mark Suddeth, HurricaneTrack.com, here with your hurricane outlook and discussion for Sunday, August 26, 2018. I am in Oahu, be leaving in the uh, next several hours, uh, back to North Carolina, the long trip back, and I will talk more about my experiences with Lane this upcoming week. Obviously, Hawaii, considering what could have happened, Definitely got off lucky uh, with the demise of Lane, well advertised by the ECMWF model, uh, that it would decouple and that it would not be a big wind event, and that certainly panned out. And for Oahu, at least, and certainly Kauai, um, there was not the excessive rainfall, and even the heavy rain and just incredible rain amounts on the big island of Hawaii did not result in, as far as I have seen, any loss of life and major widespread structural damage. There was certainly flooding and there were impacts and issues, but all things considered, I think you know as well as I do, what we were looking at a couple of days to even 24 hours before Lane's closest approach to Hawaii, all things considered, this was uh, uh, certainly a much better outcome. So I learned a lot. Brought some equipment, tested it, if you will, uh, and it worked great. So there you go. There's my initial summary. I'll talk more about it in the uh, coming days after I get back home. So let's take a look at what's happening in the tropics. All of the activity is in the Pacific. There's Lane, uh, weaker now, obviously, and it'll eventually dissipate. No more moisture really streaming in to the Hawaiian Islands associated with it, maybe indirectly. And then we have Miriam, a tropical storm uh, out in the eastern part of the Pacific. Not going to be an issue to Hawaii, it looks like, at this point. As we learned with Lane, maybe you never say never. And then we have a new system, Invest 90E, uh, in the eastern Pacific closest to Mexico there. So let's take a look at the satellite and tracking graphical tropical weather outlook, if you will, from the Hurricane Center. There is Miriam, and just to click on it and give you an idea of the track over the next few days, uh, westward, maybe even south of west, just for a moment here, uh, a couple of days maybe, and then it's going to turn more to the northwest as the ridging is not as strong, and as long as this holds out, there should not be any impact on the Hawaiian Islands from Miriam, we can hope, right? And then... 90E, back to the east here, closer to Mexico. But again, you know, looking at a close-up of it, luckily no, uh, at least the five-day cone, if I can pull that up here, of development, the development area, not going to threaten mainland Mexico. And that's great news. This has been a very busy eastern Pacific and central Pacific season overall. But fortunately, no systems developing yet. And then coming up here towards Mexico, uh, even farther south or up along the Baja, etc., that could change in September. And that is a known time period when you get these lowering heights uh, off the west coast here and these systems get attracted towards that, those troughs, uh, and you can get some recurves towards the Baja as well as northwest Mexico up here especially and we're going to need to be watching for that since the Pacific seems to be quite on a tear this year, being warmer than average, et cetera, and so forth. It's more about the atmospheric setup, and I'll talk about that more in the coming week as well with the look at the El Nino state, the Enso state. Um, basically, I just want to brief you on what's happening out there now. I'm very eager to get back to my office, though, in North Carolina, and, well, the air conditioning just turned on. It always sounds in this room, I'm in Waikiki Beach at the Hilton Garden Inn, and the AC unit, when it turns on, it sounds like a small airplane firing up its propeller. It's really interesting. Anyhow, satellite animation from Tropical Tidbits. Uh, you can clearly see Miriam here. Miriam, not Miriam. <laughs> and, uh, you know, doing its thing, generating ace points, etc., and it'll, again, turn out to see more than likely and then here is 90E, and again, this too, moving out this way and not up towards mainland Mexico. So that's great news. Looking on farther to the east, you see in the Atlantic Basin, 
Things are starting to get a little bit more interesting here, so I'll spend a little bit of time on this today. Uh, old frontal boundary off the east coast, nothing forecast to develop off of that. Gulf of Mexico generally clear, looks like maybe an upper level low or something hanging around in the central gulf, but it's out in the eastern Atlantic. This area out here uh, definitely is starting to get the attention of all of us who watch the tropics because in the next few days, it looks like something may try to develop. The indications are starting to uh, pile up. Uh, I noticed this tweet here from Tyler Stanfield. Um, increasing model consistency and consensus for tropical cyclone formation regarding a tropical wave that's expected to emerge off of Africa in five days. And, of course, this is coinciding with the general upper atmospheric background becoming less suppressive, less of that sinking air over the Atlantic. And, of course, climatology. This is the time of year when we typically see a ramping up of activity. And so this is the ECMWF, five, uh, 850 millibar, 5,000 foot level vorticity signature. And you can see at hour 144, south of the Cabo Verde Islands, Cape Verde Islands back in my day, uh, pretty good indication in the airplane engine just turned off, the AC. Uh, quick tangent sidebar distraction in Hawaii, and I haven't seen this anywhere else, when you open your sliding door to your balcony, the air conditioner won't work. I've never seen that at any other hotel. I just thought that was weird. Anyhow, the Euro definitely indicating some development here. We can see that going forward uh, in the next little tweet here, the graphic. Come on. Cooperate, please. Thank you. Uh, the FV3 GFS. This is a new generation of the GFS, still in test mode. The operational, the current version, doesn't show this, but the FV3 does, and, of course, the GFS ensembles. It's kind of like asking one person what they think about something and then asking 20 people about what they think about something, and more of the majority of people think positive about it than negative, and that's what this shows, your distribution uh, of different members of the GFS ensemble group that have a positive opinion that something will develop. Does that make sense? And you can see that clustering here near the Cabo Verde Islands, just south of there, actually, which is telling that we're not seeing this come off up to the north. It's actually going to be to the south. So we're going to have to watch this closely over the next few days. The signs, I have been telling you that it looked like it was going to change. This is actually a little earlier than I thought it would change. I thought it was going to be into early parts of September, but this does match up with climatology. And very, very important, ladies and gentlemen, look at what has happened since mid-July, and it has finally achieved the threshold of being above the long-term average by a little bit more than a tenth of a degree. And I know you're like, oh, come on, man, a tenth? I mean, it's 0.16 Celsius above the long-term average, the MDR. And we have heard so much about this, and that's why I am harping on it, because so much was made by several people that are high profile about how cold the Atlantic has been. And so now that it has warmed, I'm not seeing much talk about that. And you have to be fair and balanced to quote a certain news organization and when you talk, it's the same thing when you have extremes with, you know, favorable conditions and then they become unfavorable. You can't hype up and overblow one thing and then ignore the opposite effect of it or the opposite side of it. And, you know, I've been talking about this for a long time and these great products from Levi uh, at Tropical Tidbits to be able to track this, that we can see these ups and downs and now we're in positive territory. What does that mean? It means that the uh, the area uh, in the Atlantic Basin from 85 west to 20 west longitude, and then uh, from 10 north latitude to 20 north, that box, if you will, the average temperature is, you know, more than a tenth of a degree warmer than average. And why this matters, even though it's not that much, it's the climb out of the basement from a full degree 
below the average to now 0.16 above. That's what's important, the change and all the energy that that warmer water by, you know, a degree Celsius plus some. That's what I'm getting at, folks. It has warmed more than a degree Celsius from where it was. And that amount of energy, we could spend a whole afternoon on all the energy that water holds, etc. My goodness, that would be even impossible for me to try to convince you of. But trust me, one degree plus Celsius increase in water temperature over that broad of an area is a tremendous amount of additional energy available for latent heat. You got me? I hope so. All right, so that means then if we go look at the 10-day forecast, just as a glance here from the European and its overall uh, pressure anomalies in the Atlantic at day 10, dang, I mean, there you go. Does this mean this is exactly what this map will look like? Of course it doesn't. But it's showing, instead of nothing out here at all, five days before the traditional peak of the season, that there are three identifiable tropical cyclones uh, based on all of its members, I'm assuming. Um, I don't know if this is EPS-based or not, the ensemble prediction. Nevertheless, this is your look at day 10 from the Euro. Things are about to get busy, and we will have to see then what is the steering pattern like. And we just have to wait. You know how it is. So there you go. Uh, this will be the last update, obviously, from Hawaii. Uh, the people out here have been incredible, very, very nice. Uh, just little things like the constant eye contact they make with you when they're speaking to you, so forth and so on. It's just, it's been amazing. Certainly the island is beautiful. Uh, I can see why people like it out here. Uh, I am ready to get home. Uh, I worked hard, you know, scoping out places to capture the impacts. The impacts didn't come. Good for them, honestly. You know, anytime that works out for the people, I'm all for it. But you know as well as I do, when it goes the other way, and we saw that last year, I want to be there, set up the equipment that I do, capture data, report on what's happening, and do my job. And if it, you know, sometimes it goes the positive way, and the outcome's good for people, sometimes it doesn't. And in this case, two thumbs up for Hawaii on all accounts. And like I said, so far, no loss of life that I have heard of. And that is always the number one priority. So hopefully that will hold. Have a great rest of your Sunday. Thank you so much for tuning in. I'll be back in North Carolina by tomorrow afternoon. Yep, it's that long of a, it's the time zone things too. I'm going to be traveling many, many miles. But I'll be back home tomorrow afternoon. Don't know if I'll get an update on. If not, it will certainly be on Tuesday. Mark Sutter, HurricaneTrack.com. We'll talk as the week progresses.